Good afternoon everyone! In today's video, we'll continue taking a look at our hourly stock volatility box models, this time taking a look at FedEx along with UPS. Now the reason these two stocks were slightly interesting today is they were very much stocks on the move as shown by our new sizzle index, and that happened in that 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour. This is when much of the market was chopping around sideways, FedEx and UPS were two of the random, I would call it, stocks that were actually leading the market in terms of showing greater deals of strength. So let's take a look at the charts here and see what actually stood out. Now before we go to the charts, I think it's important to call out the Sizzle Index and explain what it's designed to help us do. The Sizzle Index is something new that we've built for our Volatility Box members. You can download it from our URL, tosindicators.com slash dashboards, and there you'll find it's the latest one. It's an hourly sizzle index, which has a slight twist to the daily sizzle index that you have inside of Thinkorswim. Instead of just looking for stocks that are setting up for the day, maybe pre-market activity, we're trying to see every single hour which are the stocks making the greatest moves, the greater than usual moves, where we can try and gather some useful pieces of information. One question that you might be looking to answer, where do we have new trends that are forming? Another question, the opposite of that, where do we have old trends that might be exhausting? And third, a general question, are there any unique markets that are in play today where we have greater than usual volatility? Maybe they've already signaled to us that it might be a trend day. Maybe they've already signaled to us that we have both buyers and sellers playing some sort of a tug of war where we might have a good deal of volatility that we can take advantage of. FedEx was one of those examples today that we'll take a look at. Again, you can download the Sizzle Index for all Volatility Box members on our website right here for free. It's included with your Volatility Box membership. Now, one quick tip when you import it into your platform, pay attention to the extreme positive and negative Sizzle scores. And I think the best way to illustrate this is with an example in FedEx and UPS today. So inside of FedEx here on the left hand side, I have our watch list loaded on. These contain, I think, the stocks that most folks are looking at. I have the sizzle index here, which is the column with the scores. I have then a column with the edge signal dashboard code. And then I have four columns here with the market pulse. And the market pulse dashboard you can download for free from our website. And that's available for everyone right here, market pulse dashboard. Same URL, tosindicators.com slash dashboard. Now the question is, if we take a look at the Sizzle Index, and it's ranked right uh, by, I think, lowest to highest, so we have the highest right down here, the two stocks, take a look at that, UPS and FedEx leading the way in that 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour. If we take a look at something like, say, QQQ, you'll see the Sizzle Index for the Qs is something at 1.28, while something like UPS, FedEx is near the 5s, 5.33, 5.78. The next closest one we have is Target, and after that, we drop into the fours. So very clearly here, FedEx is setting up something interesting. So let's take a look at the charts. First thing to call out inside of FedEx, obviously it's leading the way in terms of the sizzle index, even above UPS. So that's point number one. Point number two, we have an interesting gap fill with yesterday's price activity, where price action is trading fairly close to that gap fill right here. First off in the morning, we fell inside of our aggressive volatility box, suggesting that FedEx might be in play. We had sellers first take over control. Buyers came in, very much defended this level, drove price action up higher so much so that we're now triggering our other side's uh, volatility box entry, this time looking for a short side setup. So the question is, is this a strong setup inside of FedEx or do we wanna say defer to something like UPS? So let's take a look at the charts of UPS next here. Inside of UPS, if we take a look at the Sizzle Index, that's 5.17, so second highest trailing behind FedEx, which is at 5.74. If you take a look at the actual charts here, we've breached the upper volatility box. We take a look at that morning move, a little bit different compared to FedEx. FedEx here hit our sign entry line. UPS here, sellers don't have as much control uh, compared to what we see inside of FedEx. So there's pros and cons here. The pro, of course, is inside of FedEx with that extra volatility, you're also seeing slightly better entries. We're inside of the clouds, allowing you to shrink your risk. You also have the idea of a gap fill, which allows you to layer on additional setups. If we take a look at UPS here, you don't have really any of those things. We've already filled that gap. We've exceeded that gap. We've breached the volatility box. We're seeing slightly greater strength. 
We're not seeing the buyers and sellers have that same back and forth tug of war as we saw inside of FedEx. So a few differences there. Now let's take a look to see what actually ends up happening in each one of these stocks. Inside of FedEx here, once we fill that gap that we were looking at, price action sells off. Sellers basically reject this level as cleanly as you potentially could, driving price action down lower inside of FedEx. So a very nice fade setup that meets basically all of our rules that we would have inside of FedEx. And all of this started by taking a look at that sizzle index from that 7 to 8 a.m. Pacific hour, finding that FedEx is selling off a little bit more, or not selling off rather, uh, rallying more than it should compared to some of its peers, especially even the broader markets. So I think that's something interesting. Take a look at UPS here next. UPS sells off even more dramatically compared to FedEx, at least I think so, compared to what I would have expected. UPS here chops around sideways. We don't go deeper inside of the clouds, but once we start to see the selling occur inside of UPS, we have some fairly large red candles inside uh, of UPS suggesting that that selling is really taking over control, where we're almost now looking one more time for that long side setup, looking for one more time this chop to continue. So before we do a quick recap of the sizzle index and the fate setup and everything we discussed, let me show you a chart of how each of these markets ended today. So if I come inside of Thinkorswim, I have FedEx here loaded first. This was the move we were looking at. And inside of FedEx, you see we have that selling, but then buyers come right back in and price closes almost looking like a little bit of a double top there. If we switch over to UPS next, UPS here, that selling at least to me looks a little bit more dramatic. And then we see a very similar idea compared to FedEx here. Double top one more time, and we sell off from that double top. So in both of those markets, UPS here, we thought we might hit that bottom range. We did not end up hitting it. And this was pretty much that one entry you had, which that sizzle index allowed you to find that, hey, both FedEx and UPS are moving when the rest of the market really isn't. It seems like there's a bit of an outlier here. Is there an opportunity we can take advantage of? And how do we play that with a setup that has some concrete steps and rules around it? Now, one more time, just to recap everything we discussed, the sizzle index allows you to find stocks that are likely to be breaching our hourly volatility models. Once that happens, you can make the determination, is this a strong trend? Is this a weak trend that you think is likely to reverse? Or are we just in a period of chop where this is really just the top end of a range? Again, with that sizzle index, start with the extreme values, both positive and negative, and work your way in. And the way to choose, do you start with positive or negative, at least in my opinion, is if, say, we have one of those sell-off days, then start with focusing on all the places in which you have positive extreme values, where you might be looking at fading those areas for a short side setup and playing the overall downside bias that you have in the broader markets. So I think the broader market bias, of course, takes place first, and this then allows you to find different opportunities inside of the marketplace. One more time for all Volatility Box members, you can download the Sizzle Index along with all of the different pro tutorials and indicators for free with your Volatility Box membership from our website. Hope this video was helpful for those of you trying to navigate the uh, hourly volatility box models and trying to continue getting better at learning how to use the tool and integrating it inside of your current setups. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.